What's up everyone, my name is Ale. Welcome back to my world of stocks. In today's video, we're going to be talking all about Ford stock because not only is the Ford F-150 Lightning truck here and bringing along with it extraordinary demand, so much so that it's even caused Ford to stop taking orders for it. And not only has Ford also started to pay a dividend again, which is pretty attractive at over a 3% yield, but also on top of all of that, the stock itself has been crashing for a while now and is trading at some of the lowest prices really in years and is currently sitting at a fresh 52 week low. So considering all of this, considering that the stock is crashing, yet Ford does have some future potential here with how much they're investing in electrification, is right now the perfect time to buy Ford stock as it is beaten down in hopes that it can make a big recovery in the future. Let's find out together and let's start by taking a closer look at the stock and the business. Okay, so if we pull up a decade long chart, we can see that Ford was really crashing for many years starting around 2014 until they finally reached a bottom of just around $4 a share during the 2020 market crash. From that bottom though, the stock skyrocketed to a high of over $25 a share, which was a massive gain of over 550%. However, since then, the stock has started to crash once again, leaving them currently down over 55% and sitting at essentially a fresh 52 week low. So why has all of this happened? Well, the simple explanation is that the initial crashing was really due to the steady decline of gas powered vehicles, which you can see on this chart from Statista. In 2015, ICE vehicle sales in the US were about 17 million, but that dropped to about 14 million in 2020 and is expected to fall by even more to less than 10 million by 2025 and then less than 7 million by 2030, which is definitely a trend that is only being intensified by the unbelievable rise in gas prices that continue to set new record highs. As a result, we are seeing that for the first time in history, over half of all car buyers in the world are saying that they want an EV to be their next vehicle purchase, which in turn has caused Ford's business to either stall or heavily decline in recent years, especially following the early 2000s. Here's a chart showing Ford's unit sales in the US with the blue line representing total unit sales and the black line representing year over year growth. And you can see that they had a brief recovery following the 08 and 09 financial crisis, but then around 2014 is when sales started to really stall for them and eventually decline with 2017, 2018, 2019, 2020, and 2021 all being negative growth rates. So literally five years in a row of significant declines, which only got worse during the pandemic as they were forced to cut their entire dividend in an effort to stop as much of the financial bleeding as possible. Now, following the destruction of 2020, we know that Ford stock began to skyrocket from those lows, but a lot of that was really due to the economy opening back up, getting rid of lockdowns, along with an artificial boosting of the economy because of all the insane money printing and all the stimulus that was being handed out. As a result though, the broader stock market in general really skyrocketed and it brought Ford along with it for the ride, no pun intended. However, the fallout of all of these pandemic policies and economic manipulation is that we are now experiencing record-breaking inflation along with a rising risk of recession. And as a result, the stock market has begun crashing once again, which is forcing investors to rethink their position in Ford stock, with many of them selling out of it, which is causing it to crash heavily once again. Okay, now I know all of this paints a very negative picture of Ford and the stock, as it probably should, but believe it or not, there is actually a lot to like about Ford at these levels. So let's talk now about some of the pros and what they're doing to turn things around. And I'll let you know whether all of this is enough to convince me myself to be buying into this stock. Well, first of all, the EV market as a whole is growing by an alarming rate right now and will only get larger over time. So it's foolish to think that it won't be large enough to support not just Tesla, but really multiple players within it. In fact, last year, global EV sales more than doubled. How many other large markets can you think of that just flat out doubled in a single year? Now, granted, it's not likely to keep doubling like this in the future, but 
it will at least be growing at a very large rate. In the US alone, they did over half a million units last year, but are expected to surpass 1 million by next year, over 2 million by 2025, over 3 million by 2027, and over 4 million by 2029, which would still only be about a quarter of the entire market. And again, that's just in the United States alone, which by the way, should be a good sign for Ford since the US is by far their largest market, yet the EV portion of the market is completely, and I mean completely, dominated by Tesla at a massive 70% share, with the next closest competitor in Nissan at only around 8%. And by the way, that's probably the Nissan Leaf, which I don't want to talk trash on anyone who owns the Leaf, but that car is so damn ugly. I can't believe that people are even buying that over other options, but that just shows how easily Ford could start competing here with some of their own iconic brands like the Mustang or the Ford F-150 truck, which we'll talk more about in just a second. But as it stands, Ford barely controls only around 2% of the market. So there should be plenty of room for Ford to start stealing market share in the EV market, especially since it's completely really dominated by just one company in Tesla, which I don't really think would be all that difficult for Ford to at least start competing more heavily in considering how popular the Ford brand is in America. In fact, if you look at all vehicle sales, including gas, Ford actually commands the most market share at over 15%. Of course, this market is much more competitive with at least three or four other car makers in the double digits competing heavily against Ford. But if you're wondering where Tesla is, they're actually the ones here at just 2% now. So they're a much smaller player when it comes to overall the entire auto, mar auto market. Plus, like I said before, Ford is the owner of some of the most popular brands like the Mustang, which they converted into an electric crossover version last year that seems to be already selling pretty well and helping them steal some market share since Inside EVs reported that when looking at electric car registrations this year, the Mustang Mach-E is already the third best-selling EV only behind the Tesla Model Y and Model 3. It's even ahead of the Nissan Leaf. Obviously, the Model Y and Model 3 are gigantically higher at over 150,000 combined versus the Mustang at only around 15,000, but the point is that Ford is at least starting to compete more heavily now, which may only intensify with their new F-150 Lightning Edition that they're barely now releasing. Because Ford's F-150 truck brand was the best selling truck in America for f over four decades in a row, and if you think that's crazy, they even had a stretch where it was the best selling vehicle just in general for over three decades in a row, even ahead of sedans and SUVs. That's really crazy. So now they've released an electric version of it, which is in such high demand that Ford even had to freeze all new orders after 200,000 because it already covered over three full years of production capacity, meaning every truck they can build is likely to be sold. Plus, they're aiming to invest up to $50 billion on electrification through 2026, where they hope to produce over 2 million EVs per year starting that year, which would equate to around a third of all their vehicles. As a result of all these moves, sales are actually expected to return to growth both this year and the next by around 6% this year, and then a double-digit 10% growth next year as well, although that will technically still be lower than what they did all the way back to five years ago. But at least the stock is pretty cheap now with a non-gap forward P ratio of only around six, which is about 50% cheaper than the rest of the sector. Although gap is actually a little higher than the sector, probably because of all the spending they're having to do and the cannibalization of their higher margin ICE vehicles, which over the long term, I just don't see Ford having the same high margins that Tesla benefits from who went all in on electrification from the beginning and is also generating substantial revenues from softwares like autonomous driving where they are far ahead of any other you know, automaker out there. In fact, Ford's operating margin is only less than 7%, while Tesla's is much higher at over 15%. And I think that'll only grow larger over time as they reach software-like margins when people start paying Tesla higher prices for fully autonomous driving in order to increase their free time and comfort. And while Ford has at least started to pay their dividend again, which is pretty nice at over a 3% yield, it's not really enough to offset the high inflation that we're currently going through, so I think you're still going to need some gains from the actual stock price itself. And ultimately, I think that's what all of this really comes down to with a stock like Ford. Yes, there is a lot to like here, but there is also a lot to be cautious of. And for me personally, 
I still prefer Tesla just because not only do they have a lead, you know, a lead in the future of the automotive market with electrification, but that's not even the biggest reason of all. Really, the biggest reason why I prefer Tesla is because they are essentially a tech company that I think is going to play a huge role in multiple very large markets. For example, the future of autonomous driving with the robo taxi service, the future of robotics with the Tesla bot, logistics with the semi truck, energy and battery storage. And meanwhile, Ford is in my opinion, more of just kind of a pure play on just the automotive market. So it's not as broad or branched out as Tesla's. And even in the automotive market, I still think that Tesla is always going to offer better performance for the price because they went in, they went all in on electrification, on autonomous driving and all of these different features much earlier on than Ford and the rest of the industry. So with how much Ford still needs to invest just to catch up with Tesla, with how much they're going to continue to cannibalize their business with electric cars, taking away the higher margins of their ICE vehicles. And I actually don't even think that Ford is going to see as much growth as you would typically expect or as you might expect, because while they will have some growth in electric cars, they're going to see a decline in their ICE cars. So it's just going to kind of balance out a bit. I don't actually think that Ford will gain a lot of market share in the overall automotive market. Whereas Tesla, I think has huge room to expand their market share in the entire automotive market. Cause we took a look at the percentages. Tesla only holds about 2% of the entire US automotive market. While Ford is much higher 15%. If anything, Ford might actually go down in, uh, in market share. Yes, they'll go up in electric market share, but they're gonna go down in overall because of the cannibalization of their ICE cars. So again, there is a lot to like about Ford. It's definitely a value play at this valuation. It's definitely a dividend play with that high yield, but it's not as broad and it's not going to be as high growth as something like Tesla. So really you could just kind of sum it up to this. The two stocks are not the same. You don't nece you don't have to choose just between Ford or Tesla. I think both companies can be successful and both stocks can be successful, but in different ways. Whereas Tesla is more of a future technology growth type of company, I think Ford will play the role of more of a value dividend type of stock. And so if that's what you're looking for, then you might actually prefer Ford over Tesla. But I myself, I already have a lot of speculative stocks that I'm hoping will recover. I have a lot of value stocks that have low valuations. I have a lot of dividend stocks. And then I also have Tesla, which gives me plenty of exposure to automotive and electrification. So I just don't really feel like I need to own Ford stock on top of all of that. So I'll probably be staying on the sidelines for now. But don't get me wrong, I do like Ford stock at these levels. And hey, I might buy it at some point in the near future. But if I do, I'll definitely make sure to make an update video and let you guys know. But what do you guys think? I'd love to hear your thoughts down below in the comment section. Do you like Ford stock? Do you own it? Are you thinking about buying it? How do you feel about Tesla as well? Do you own Tesla? Do you agree with me that they're just two different types of stocks and really you could own both or just one or neither? But whatever your thoughts are, leave them down below. I'll read and I'll respond to them and I will uh, definitely enjoy that. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video and if you did, please consider hitting the like button, subscribing if you haven't already, it really helps the channel. But hope you're all doing well out there and I will catch you in the next video. Take care, Bye bye